If you think we're on the run We are the boys who will stop your little game We are the boys who will make you think again Cause who do you think you are kidding Mr. Hitler If you think old England's done Mr. Brown goes off to town on the A21 But he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun So who do you think you are kidding Mr. Hitler Well, there it is. How do you like it? Oh, yes. Yes, that's much better. Hasn't he done it well, sir? Mm. Yes. I, I couldn't make the name any bigger or it wouldn't go on the board. No, no, that's, that's quite adequate. Yeah. Of course, I, I could have done tall, thin letters, but that wouldn't be right. Why not? Oh, no, no. I like the lettering on the outside of the door to be in keeping with the person sitting in the desk behind. <laughs> <laughs> So I've done little short fat letters. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Blewett. Right, sir. Well, the uh, the men are ready for inspection, sir. Right. Well, I'll finish this later. Right. This is my speech for the uh, Rotary dinner. I'm oh. to be the guest speaker, you know. Are you ready? Mm. Oh, how very exciting for yes. you, sir. <laughs> are the men in good heart? What? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, they uh, they seem to be to be uh, you know just a little bit quiet. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I'll soon put that right. Now. <laughs> I've been reading a book lately hmm? called Great Leaders of Men. And you know, Wilson, there's one thing that they all had in common. Yes. Before their men went into battle, they used to tell them a joke. Ah. Hmm. We're not going into battle, are we? <laughs> we are on the front line every minute of our lives, you know. <laughs> spot, spot, hand! I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know who'd started. Well, now, catch it. In view of the long night ahead of us, I thought that I would relieve the proceedings by sharing you up with a little anecdote. And when I've finished, you have my permission to laugh in the ranks. <laughs> How nice. But don't anticipate it, Godfrey. Take that smile off your face. Oh, oh I'm sorry, sir. Now. It appears that there were three Tommies. A Welshman, an Englishman, and a Scotsman. Head on. Head on, Captain Manning, head on. I hope this is not another of these stupid jokes about Celts. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, as a Scot, I am sick and tired of hearing stupid Sassenach jokes that make a mock of us. <laughs> After all, we don't make jokes about bowler hats. Will you be quiet, Fraser? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with it. Kilts. Where was I up to? Uh, a Welshman, an Englishman, and a Scotsman, sir. All right. Yeah. Now, it seems that three, these three Tommies were sitting in their mess hall, and the Englishman said to the Scotsman, pass the semolina pudding. And the Scotsman said, no, I won't. And the Englishman said, why not? And the Scotsman said, because it states quite clearly in King's regulations, never help another soldier to desert. <laughs> <laughs> See, about... <coughs> well, you can laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that'd cheer you up. Let's <laughs> put them in a good mood. Oh, yes, of course, sir. I'm sure it's cheered them up no end. Tip worth knowing that, you know, Wilson. When you're handling men, always know when to unbend. I'll remember that, sir. Right. Captain Min Warren. Yes. What happened to the Welsh soldier? <laughs> Captain didn't like Semolina. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I hope you don't think because we didn't laugh very much, we was casting aspersions on your joke telling, sir. It wasn't that at all. No, you told it quite well, really. Oh, yes, indeed. Very good it was, man. <laughs> After the parade, I shall write it down and send it to Radio Fun. They pay half a crown for a joke like that. Or five bob, if it's a good one. <laughs> it's just that, at the moment, so we're not much in the mood for merrymaking and horseplay. Oh, come, come, that's not like an old soldier. Tommy Atkins was always one for a laugh, even when he was up to his chin in mud. Ah, uh, you're right there, sir. We did a lot of laughing in the mud in the last war. We were doing it nearly all the time, except when we got shot. 
<laughs> but tonight is different, so we've been wrestling with our consciences and, and over an incident, what occurred last night, so and my sex and me said, we'd like to take you into a private place and reveal something. <laughs> Well, surely it'll be soon enough after the parade, won't it? <laughs> You're quite right, Captain, quite right. I tell you here and now, he's making a flagpole out of a matchstick. <laughs> <laughs> and bringing you into it, well, it's only making things ten times worse. No, it's only fair, Mr Fraser. I mean, after all, Captain Mannering's the one who'll be court-martialed. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> court-martialed? <clears throat> I think, uh, Jones, your section better come into the office. You better come too, Wilson. All right, sir. Uh, Frank. Frank. What on earth have you all been doing? Well, if I tell you, will you promise not to tell Mum? Of course not, no. Well, yes. Hmm? No, I can't. It's a secret. <laughs> right, come along. Else, settle down. <coughs> now, what's all this about? Well, sir, it's like this, sir. We... It was very cold out on patrol last night, wasn't it, lads? Uh, oh, yes, it is. Yeah, I knew yes. you wouldn't want us to get chill, sir, so I took my lads into the horse and groom and made sure everyone got a tot of rum down them, sir. I, I know you've done the same thing in my position, sir. I very much doubt that, Jones. You know my views on alcohol. Yes, sir. Well, we hadn't been out on patrol again for ten minutes when Mr Cheeseman he started shivering. Well, you know what it is when you've got the nudges, boy. You shiver all over, isn't it? <laughs> well, I knew you wouldn't want a guest of the platoon anything to happen to them, sir, especially not a newspaper press correspondent reporter, sir. So I took him into the King's Heads, and it's just as well I did, cos after he'd downed a couple, he was right as ninepence. I only had one in there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 when we come out, sir, we got the King's Head, we were just passing the, the goat and compasses, and, and the landlord, he come out, he said, you heard a bit of a rumbling down below. So I sent a couple of men down with hand grenades, and the rest of us stood by to give them covering fire. Where about? Two in the saloon, the rest of us in the snug. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did quite right to tell me about this. Yeah. And providing you promise that it won't occur again, I shall overlook it this time. Uh-uh. Yeah. The man's no finished. You mean there's more? Yes, sir. Well, when, when we come out, sir, it got a bit embarrassing, sir. Uh, if it's embarrassing, you don't want to hear about it, do you, sir? Yes, I certainly do want to hear about it. Uh, Go on. It, it was I, sir. I, I'm afraid I, I became a rather embarrassing. <laughs> you got no, I'm afraid, sir, sir, I, I started to sing uh, rather raucously. <laughs> it was a song about a monk. <laughs> <laughs> well long as it was a religious song. <laughs> this one wasn't a religious. No. About a monk of high renown. <laughs> I see. Go on. I didn't realise that monks of high renown were all wicked like that. That's Did all you? right, Pat. <laughs> stop, stop. Yeah, well, I, I knew you wouldn't must want Mr Godfrey to, you know, make an exhibition of himself, so, so I took him inside to sober up, sir. Inside and... the Red Lion, that was. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, while he was sobering up, the rest of us had hardly anything to drink at all. Hardly anything at all, sir. Yeah. You see, it was after that that it got a bit more embarrassing. <laughs> You're sir. quite sure you want to hear about it, sir? <laughs> Will you be quiet, Wilson? Yes. Well, you see, a man come in and said uh, there was something go on, going on in the haystack, you see, sir. And I said in jocular fashion, well, there's lots of things going on in haystacks. Uh, Aye, well, it's like that Bronwyn Jones, the fat Welsh girl who used to wash the glasses on a Saturday night. <laughs> she spent half her life in that haystack. <laughs> I used to call her the welcome in the valley. <laughs> Jeez, well, keep quiet, have a sec. You see, well, all jocular thoughts went straight out of my head when I realised I was a soldier and my duty to go out and investigate, sir. Well, I'm glad somebody came to their senses at last. Yes, and then I sobered up quick as a flash. Not that I was drunk, mind. <laughs> but the thought of encountering a huge, storming, parachuting German paratrooper, sir, possibly disguised as a nun, <laughs> that, that set a whole cold shiver down my spine, sir. But uh, I rallied my men, sir, and went out in the murky night uh, and, and with fixed bayonets, sir. I wasn't at all frightened. Now, I think that gin and cider and whiskey must give you courage, yes, don't you? <laughs> Stop, stop. Anyway, so we were just going near the haystack when something flutters up. You know, and I, I was very alert by now, sir, and my reflections was very good. All of a sudden, I raised my rifle and I shot it. What? You haven't you? 
Remember you shot Bronwyn Jones? No, no, it was a great big enormous turkey. It's plucked and in my fridge. <laughs> I can hardly believe my ears. <laughs> my platoon should go out on a drunken rampage like this from pub to pub. Like these comic stories that chap on the wireless tells. Uh, Rob Wilton? The day you all oh. broke out. <laughs> <laughs> Be quiet. You should all be on a charge. And you're getting far too cheeky, boy. <laughs> Speak to your mother about you. <laughs> That's not fair. I'm being victimised because of my use. Why don't you have a word with Mr Jones' mother? <laughs> you leave my mother out of this. My mother's gone to another place. Sorry, Mr Jones. Angmering. <laughs> How many people know about this? Not many. She wasn't a woman, Dad. I'm not talking about this. <laughs> talking about this, this drunken rampage. Nobody knows but us, sir. So I say we should eat the turkey and hold our tongues. Oh, no, not at all. There's only one place that bird could have come from, and that's the North Beddington Turkey Farm. Now, you're all going to apologise to Mr Boggis, and you're going to have to pay for that bird. I say, I say, excuse me, Mr. Boggis about. It's Wednesday. What is it? He says it's Wednesday. To humor him, I suppose. Yeah. I wonder if it's possible to speak to your master. I just told you, it's Wednesday. <laughs> Well, it's Wednesday. Don't you start. It's market day. Has he got to market? That's right. It's Wednesday. <laughs> there is nowhere. Have you lost a turkey? <laughs> Hard to say, isn't it? <laughs> My men have accidentally killed one. We think it must have come from here. We'd like to pay you for it. Will you give this money to Mr. Boggis when he returns and ask him to accept our sincere apologies? Oh, no. Mr. Boggis won't want me to take no money. It might not be his turkey. Well, there's nobody else in the district keeps them. It must be one of yours. That wouldn't be good enough for Mr. Boggis. Not unless he knew one of ours was missing. Well, how many should there be? 210. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Jones, 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 that's three. no good. It'll take years. We could count 30 each. That's a good idea, Pike. Now, listen, everybody. We're all going to count 30 turkeys each, right? right. Well, get on with it. You are part of this platoon, you know. Well, how do we know we're not counting the same turkeys? <laughs> Took a long time to spot that one, didn't it? <laughs> Captain Manrin, why don't we put a dab of paint on each turkey as we count? Mr. Boggis wouldn't like that. He don't like people painting his turkeys. <laughs> Uh, my sister Dolly has a lot of hoopla rings we used at the church fete. Now, if we put one on each one of the turkeys, we know which ones we counted. That's a very good idea, Godfrey. Uh, 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 shall I nip and fetch them? Yes, run along. <laughs> <laughs> now, men, you have each got 42 rings. On the command move, I want you to place a ring over a turkey's head. If there's a ring, over at the end, it means that one turkey is missing. Right, off you go. Wait till the turkeys finish lunch. Well, all the rings were used up, so they didn't come from there. Yeah. 
Point is, what are we going to do next? Well, sir, there's a, a Jersey shot it. I mean, I suppose it rightfully belongs to him. No, no, he was on duty. He was wearing one of my uniforms, carrying one of my rifles, and he fired one of my bullets. I see, but uh, does that mean you're bagging it, sir? No, it doesn't mean I'm bagging it. Not all of it, anyway. In that case, I bagged it. <laughs> no, I'm afraid you can't do that. Yes, you I bagged it first. But you said you didn't want it. Anyway, you didn't use the word bags, you see, so it doesn't count. <laughs> now, don't start any of that public school cheating with me. <laughs> I bags first, that's all. But I all. tell you, you've already done about it at all. I'm sorry. Come in. Come in, boys. Come in. Yes, what is it? Uh, Captain Manager, my section and me, sir, we've been having a hot, hot think. And we're very askance at what we've done, sir. And we come to the conclusion that with our ill-gotten gains, we're going to give a nice turkey dinner to the old age pensioners. <laughs> yeah, that, Wilson? Mm. Trust our chaps to come up trumps in the end. Yes, I, I think on the face of it, it seems to me to be a very good idea. It's a capital idea. Yes. We are night to remember. But it must be organised properly. Now, Wilson, mm -hmm. I want you to set up a turkey dinner general purposes committee. All right, sir. And I back to chairman. <laughs> now, in order to speed our deliberations, I have made a short list of the elements uh, that have to come together to make a successful turkey dinner. Oh, trust him to make it long-winded. <coughs> now, first of all, we have the turkey, which... Uh, Corporal Jones's section has provided. Yeah, I heard about that. What did you do? Fix bayonets and charge? <laughs> <laughs> now, don't you start, Mr. Holmes. Don't you start. He's a troublemaker, he is, sir. I don't understand why he has to be here at all. Mr. Hodges has booked the hall for this what? evening. It's only because he released it that you could have this meeting at all. I think we ought to propose a vote of thanks to Mr. Hodges. <laughs> don't you, Your Reverence? No, I don't. Please sit down, otherwise we shall be here all night. <laughs> now. When times were different, of course, turkey dinners would also include bacon, sausages, vegetables, roast potatoes, bread sauce, and, last but not least, gravy. Yeah. Uh, did you save the giblets? <clears throat> the most lovely gravy giblets does, with a pinch of salt. <laughs> yes, I, I think we saved the giblets. Of course, I saved the giblets. Yeah. Oh, well, let's all give a vote of thanks to Mr Jones for saving the giblets. <laughs> Don't you start. Don't oh, you start. Oh, no, no, all right, all right. Don't ask that. Right. What's giblets? <laughs> like, really, I mean, it's the inside of the turkey, isn't it? It's the liver, the kidneys, and all that, you know, and the, uh, what do you call it, the gizzard, all that sort of thing. Well, yeah? I don't want gravy made out of that. Huh? <laughs> don't be so silly, Frank. You've had it dozens of times. Well, I wouldn't have if I'd known. <laughs> My sister Dolly won't boil the giblets. She says the smell makes the Pekingese too excited. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's very funny, you know. Because it might keep carters like that about kippers, you know. It makes them jump around and run the bike. <laughs> <them. laughs> Excited. And... Can we get on? Yes, I quite agree. Don't let's get tied up with giblets at this stage of the affair. <laughs> <laughs> now, we ought now to select someone, a volunteer, preferably, to cook the turkey. <laughs> My mum could cook it. Mm -hmm. Your mum can cook anything, can't she, Uncle Arthur? <coughs> Well, answer the boy. Oh, yeah, yes, of course. Yes, of course you can, Frank. Of course, of course you can. Well, yes, Mrs. Fox is the finest cook what I've ever come across. Haven't I always said you were the finest cook, Mrs. Fox? Well, you've you've always been very nice about my dumplings. <laughs> Perhaps we should put it to the vote. All those in favour of Mrs. Pike's cooking the turkey? One, two, three. Mrs. Fox? Well, a tie. In that case, I shall give the casting vote to Mrs Fox. Well, that's nice, isn't it? You didn't even put your hand up, did you, Arthur? Now, look, Mary, I, I, you see, I, I didn't want you to have to go through all that trouble, you see. That's nice, isn't it? Nice way to thank you, isn't it? She give you her egg for breakfast this morning. <laughs> Mavis, uh, listen, Wilson, Mavis. Wilson, will you please address your remarks through the chair? Right, through the chair... I did not know it was Mrs. Pike's egg. <laughs> Can we get on? I, I hope she won't make it dry. My pensioners don't like it dry. Turkey can be very dry. I second that. Oh, be quiet, Mr. Yateman. <laughs> well, when we was in the Sudan, we cooked an ostrich once, but that wasn't dry. Because we boiled it in General Kitchener's bath. <laughs> in the 
told him when he came to do his ablutions, he sent for his backman, he said, come in, my man. What is this ring of dirt doing around my hip bath? That isn't a ring of dirt, sir. That is ostrich fat. And he gave him seven days field confinement for impertinence. But he told the truth, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't always do to tell the truth, you know. Doesn't always no, do. Did, all right, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now, what do we do next? Sir, stuff it. <laughs> Fraser. Stuff it, sir, stuff it. So you'll need to stuff it with uh, parsley and thyme or <laughs> maybe chestnuts. Very well, then. Thyme and parsley it is. Perhaps you'd like to undertake that task, Mrs. Pike. Of course. Right, that's decided then. My wife makes very tasty parsley and thyme stuffing. Yes, thank you, Mr. Yet, but we just decided that Mrs. Pike is going to do the stuffing. Uh, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Bread sauce, you must have bread sauce, boy. It makes turkey go down the fat treat to dust. Yes, indeed. Yes, especially if it's dry. But it's not going to be dry. Yeah, Mrs. Fox makes beautiful bread sauce. There shouldn't be too much onion in the bread sauce. Onion isn't good for old people. Make them excited, do it like the Pekingese. <laughs> Don't you start being rude to Mr. Godfrey. He's a very wise man. Here, and another thing, Napoleon. Is Corporal Jones serving the turkey as home guard or eating it as a pensioner? <laughs> That's it, I've had enough. Yeah, no, <laughs> yes, it's all right, sir. All right. Yes. It's no good. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Now. With the exception of Mr. Blewett, we shall all be serving, of course. I shall supervise, but I'm afraid I shall have to leave a little early on that night because I'm guest speaker at the Rotary Dinner. So that's why you sent your tickets back. Uh, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> However, we can't do anything about serving the bird, of course, uh, before it's cooked, so uh, we mustn't leap ahead too fast. Too fast? Go blimey, you'll only be halfway through talking before the time to bung the bird in the oven. <laughs> Can we turn our attention to the gravy? Oh, my wife makes good gravy. Oh, damn I. Everything else is burnt to a cinder. <laughs> but the gravy, you never tasted anything like it. Life has its compensations, that's what I say. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Can we get on? Yeah, we are getting on, Wilson. Right, we'll put Mrs. Cheeseman down then to make the gravy. Right, old boy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, that brings me to the vegetables. Uh, vegetables pose rather a bigger problem, if I may say so. Not only on account of their availability, but uh, because of the sheer bulk of material involved. Hello First in cooking. Me and England, while yes. Yes. That's it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Fraser. <laughs> Putting too many on you now, it won't go round. Hmm? Well, according to my calculations, we've only got four more to serve, sir. Yeah, but don't splash. I don't want to on my tails. No, sorry, sir, but the way you've got yourself covered up, I don't think there's much chance of that. Yes. Oh, there we are, boy. There we are. There's too much onion in it, in spite of my warning. Aye. And the gravy's too ah. thick. Am I when I was a wee bit laddie in the wild and lonely Isle of Barra? <laughs> my mother made gravy. It was thin and weak, and my father used to belt us regular as clockwork every night. <laughs> but it made men of us. <laughs> hey, come on, hurry up. The first ones to be finished before the last ones are served. Are you eating? What if I am? This is for the old people, not for you. Why, well, it's only a bit of old skin. Oh, Mr. Manager. Uh, it's Mr. Blewett, sir. What's the matter with it? He wonders if you can put it through the mincer. <laughs> you haven't got a mincer here? Cut it up for him. Right, very good, sir. Mr. Manreen? Yes? Yeah. Some of them are asking what's happened to the parson's nose. Now, look here, Pike. I can't be bothered with details like that. I've got 32 dinners to serve. Only asked. Oh. Incidentally, it is missing, but I thought I'd turn a blind eye to it. Captain Manry, mm. this whole affair is not well organised at all. They all started to eat as soon as their plates arrived. Well, of course, otherwise it would go cold. Well, it's not right. Before I even started to say for what we're about to receive, half of them had received it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not a 
having that. He's got all white meat. I haven't got any. Oh, well, we soon put that to right. See, sure. oh, there's a bit of white sure. meat. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mr. Jones! Mr. Jones! Mrs. Garstang says, have you got anything else? Because she doesn't eat turkey. Well, if she doesn't like turkey, she shouldn't come to a turkey dinner, should she? Oh, no! <laughs> well, there we are. That's the last one. Uh, right. <laughs> My goodness, me, sir. You, uh, you really do look awfully smart. Ooh. Well, after all, I am the guest speaker. Yeah. Just because there's a war on, we can't let our standards drop, can we? Uh. Do you, uh, do you think I should go and say a few words of welcome before I go? Well, sir, I really think you ought to let them digest their turkey first. Oh, no. Hmm? That'll make me late for the rotary dinner. Oh, I, I see. go to... How are you getting on, Ross? I'll just watch the Yes, all right. Not eating up. Ramming it down the line. Oh, Mr. Slater, enjoying yourself? Oh, thank you. No, salt, 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 Dave, it's got no salt in it. Hey, can I have some salt, please, waiter? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Manry, Mr. McCulley says, are there any seconds? Oh. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Stupid boy, look what you've done. <laughs> You're stupid. Go put the gravy on the side of the plate, stupid, not me. That's the only shirt I've got. Excuse me, sir, there's some, uh, there's some blotting paper in the office. I'll, I'll go and get that. That'll take it off. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr Manion, if I've got gravy all over you, dicky. It is not a dicky, Pike. <laughs> Just you try this, sir. Careful, Wilson. There you are, sir. There you are. It's much better. Much, much better. You see, you can hardly notice it. Oh, look, you've got a little mark on your dicky, mm. Mr. Manring. It is not a dicky, he said so. <laughs> well, never mind, I know. We'll put a little bit of white enamel paint on that. <laughs> so that won't notice it and stop it from obtruding, won't it? More are. gravy wanted for the top table. All right, won't be a minute. There we are. Now do it very carefully. There we are. There we are. There. That's right. See? There, that doesn't show now, does it? <laughs> oh, really, Jones. Anyone got any black paint? No. This is ridiculous. I can't get it on my feet as the guest speaker with paint all over my tails. I've got some at home, sir. Oh, they wouldn't fit, Uncle hmm? Arthur. No, not somebody as round as Mr. Manreen. <laughs> I think I have the answer, sir. Uh, why don't you pretend you hurt your arm uh, and make a sling out of your scarf? Good idea, son. I'll cover up the mark a treat. Yeah, go on, you give it a try, Mr. Manning. I'll make you look very, very brave during your speech. Uh, St. Jones is right, you know, sir. I mean, if you uh, wince, you know, every now and again, I mean, it'll, you'll get twice the applause at the end. That's right, sir. There you are. Nobody will ever know. Yes, and you look very brave, Mr. Manrin. Yes, well, I'm really very cross. <laughs> However, just like our boys to show resourcefulness in an emergency. <laughs> Help me up with my coat. <laughs> Good luck, sir. Good luck, sir. Good luck, sir. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Don't you worry, you look fine. Good luck, Mr. Manrin. And I'm not a stupid boy, am I? No, no, no. I'm very sorry about that, sir. Uh, Mike. Here, you're bringing Mike. that gravy around, you. Thank you.